We, we don't have the little ones today. I was going to ask them if they like superheroes, and a lot of kids love superheroes. Well, uh, if you could have a superpower, what would your superpower be? Sleep. Sleep? The amazing sleeping woman? Yes. All right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, someone in the first church said, uh, energy. And I said, well, you just got to take your chemical formula called coffee. That's, that'll give you the energy. Uh, if you, would you want super strength or would you like to fly? Or um, I, I tell you, I'd love to be able to heal. I tell you, that would be a great superpower. Be able to touch someone and heal them. That would be great. Uh, I tell you, the one I wouldn't want is x-ray vision. You know, because there's things you can't unsee. Okay. Uh, or I wouldn't want to be able to read other people's minds because uh, well, God knows what goes on inside our minds. <laughs> Everybody knows uh, there, there are things that we don't say out loud that we probably thought. And we know we probably shouldn't have thought what we thought. So, but God uh, tells us that our thought life is just as important as what we say and do. Our thought life and how we think are just as important. So we're going to look at that today. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we hear your word today, I pray that you will encourage us, that you will strengthen us, that you'll build us up and ultimately transform us into that beautiful image of your son, Jesus. No longer in the image of Adam, but in the new man, Christ, the new Adam. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right. So, today's sermon is called A New Way of Thinking. You know, I heard on the radio the other day, and I looked it up, about plants. And if you play music for plants, or sing to your plants, it will cause them to grow healthier and bigger. And I was said, that can't be true. So I looked it up on the internet, and of course there are a ton of studies by different colleges, different places around the world that did this study. And what they found is, is if you play positive music, specifically classical or jazz, plants will grow stronger, bigger, and more fruitful. And I was like, wow. But the, uh, if you play heavy metal music and other types of music along that genre, they will grow weaker and smaller and not produce as much fruit. And I was sitting there thinking, wow. That is interesting. That is interesting. But you know, the funny thing is, even though we're different creatures and we're built, and maybe we're more complex and different, we still have the same uh, uh, similarities. That if we continue to consume things that are good for us, we grow healthy and strong. And we bear a lot of fruit. But if we consume things that are bad for us, we grow weaker and produce less fruit and we're less productive. It's the same thing that we're going to look at today because there's a thing I, I like to call stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. Maybe you've heard this idea uh, in conflict, conflict resolution seminars and, and books. There's this concept of stinking thinking, how you can change your outlook and your mood and uh, everything that's connected to that by the way you think. You know, uh, interestingly enough, when something bad happens, we can be our worst critic or say we uh, make a mistake. We can beat ourselves up. We can really uh, cause a lot of issues in our own lives. And we're our hardest critics. Like, ah, I'm so stupid. I'm, I'm, how could I ever do that? That's called stinking thinking. Or maybe if someone is not paying attention on the road and they actually cut us off and we're sitting there, oh, I can't believe they did that, thinking that they did that on purpose. That's stinking thinking. Maybe they just weren't paying attention and or maybe the wind grabbed their car. I, I don't know. Or maybe you have a neighbor you, you don't like and he's cutting his trees and he actually left a, a branch on your property. And you, you, you look at that branch and you're, oh, he did that on purpose. I'm going to let him know my peace of mind. And by the time you get to the door, you've already thought of all the things you want to say and you blow up. That's stinking thinking. And it doesn't help anyone. You know, Jesus said 
uh, it's not food that goes into you that makes you unclean. Because the Pharisees, again, obsessed with food. And I know they had the dietary laws. But he's like, that's not the issue. The issue is the heart, the brain. What comes out of you is what makes you unclean. And what comes out of your heart and out of your mind and out of your mouth, for overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, is what you've put into it. What you've put into it. You know, a lot of TV shows today, and you're all adults and things like that, and uh, like uh, uh, there was 666 Park Avenue, that was a popular show, it was about the devil, and then now I think five seasons on Netflix, uh, uh, Lucifer is... Uh, uh, still going strong, and I remember a church lady telling me, "Oh, well, he's a, he's nice in the he's nice in the uh, the show." And I'm like, "What? No, no, don't watch that. What are you, what are you doing?" Um, uh, Thirteen Reasons Why is on a second season, uh, at least, uh, and a lot of kids that watch that show committed suicide because it's all about suicide and it, as a good alternative, how to get back at someone. That's terrible. And so a lot of the things, a lot of the media that we consume today, movies, books, the internet, TV shows, all contribute to a poor state of mind and impart to us terrible ideas, terrible ideas. And the funny thing is, is, is there's really no difference if you look at the ancient Greeks than today. They had the same thing. Instead of a TV show, they would have very dark plays. I mean, if you've ever read Greek literature, it's, it's very dark. Oh, my goodness. Or they had the Colosseum in the Romans, and they would watch people murder each other to death for entertainment. They would sit wild animals on each other, and they would have wild animals fight to the death, all for entertainment purposes in the Colosseum. And, of course, they had the red light districts. Today, uh, a lot of people get online and they look at all kinds of things online that, uh, you know, uh, I mean, if you can think it and you can type it, you could probably find someone that's doing it uh, on the Internet. And so all of these things can contribute to a poor state of mind that produces a weaker Christian, a weaker person that does not bear much fruit for God. And so... What does uh, the Apostle tell us, or what is he telling the Philippians, which applies to us? Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. He's saying, if it's good, if it's praiseworthy, if it's pure, think about these things. Shift your way of thinking. From away from these things that aren't of God and focus on the things that are good and pure and wholesome and are of God. Paul is calling us to shift our thinking, to shift what we believe, to shift what we consume in our minds and in our hearts. Again, in Romans, he's making the point again. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. By the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. And so he's saying that there's a transformation. Again, they put it in, other, uh, uh, in another place in Corinthians. To take off the old self and to put on the new self. Again, over and over again. About this transformation that needs to take pay, place in our hearts and minds as well. As eventually, when we're raised with Christ in the eternal body, transformed for all time uh, to be eternal. But now he's saying, be transformed in your mind. Put on a new way of thinking, a new way of being. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. And so the things that maybe are entertaining to us, sometimes we need to put them away. Because they're inappropriate and they're not of God. In fact, they lead us from God. They lead us into a way of thinking about ourselves and about others in this world. They help blind us or at least cloud us into seeing. I mean, if you turn on the news, uh, it's hard pressed to find good news on the news. I know there are people out there that are building schools to do an amazing work. And yet, maybe once in a blue moon, 
you get to hear about it. The rest is about murder, theft, robbery. And before you know it, you start thinking of your fellow man in such a way that they're just terrible. But God's called you to shift your way of thinking, to be removed from those things that aren't of God. You know, I, I watched a movie called Jacob the Liar, and it was with Robin Williams, and it's about uh, the, the Jews in the ghettos uh, in Germany um, during the war, and uh, they're uh, starving to death. They've been in there years, and there's no hope. They don't get any news. And uh, they're all fixed to be uh, shipped off to ch concentration camps. Well, Jacob, who Robin Williams' character, is a, a barber. And so the Nazi uh, soldiers, or the, the, the officers, wanted him to come in and give them haircuts. And so he went in there and he gave them haircuts. And while he was in there, he heard their radio was on. And he heard what was being said on the radio. And on the radio, it said that the Allies were breaking through the German lines... And that they would be there soon uh, in the Battle of the Bulge. And they were heading straight for Germany. And so he was really excited. And he went and told everybody. And it made its rounds around the, the ghettos that they were trapped in. And a lot of people were sick, malnourished. And all of a sudden when they heard this news, their spirits were lifted up. And the doctors who said, well, look, I, I can't do anything for you because I don't have any medicine... But this good news, this hope, has really transformed my patients. They've all of a sudden got a new air about them. Because they're thinking shit from despair to hope. From despair to hope. And so we can really, really get down on ourselves and let the devil tell us that we're not worthy. Well, that's a lie, because God says you don't have to be worthy, because my grace is greater than your sin. Well, I don't have, my, I, I'm not holy. I don't have righteousness. And he says, it's by my righteousness, not yours. I'll never be worthy. Of course you won't. But Christ is worthy. And we are in Christ. That's a way of shifting the way from despair to hope. And seeing yourself in a different way and in a different light. And so it's a really good movie. And eventually, you know, they're, they're, they're murdering people for, uh, uh, to find out where they got this radio because the news, because uh, there's no radios allowed. And uh, he, uh, they all think he has a radio. And it's just an interesting movie with Robin Williams. But there was a recent su uh, study about uh, neurologists uh, or neuroscientists that shed some new light on the mind. And the human mind thinks up to 60,000 thoughts each day. And most thinking is done on autopilot, which is involuntarily, your mind is thinking. With the mind thinking the same habitual thoughts over and over again. In fact, that's where your routines come from, is that this autopilot that your mind is set on. It, it, if it seems like you're... Hasten, hashing out the same day, the same mental routine each day, there's a good chance that you are, according to neuroscientists. And the brain protects this storehouse of information that we accumulate living in this world, be it good or bad. Its ingrained habits are protected by an autopilot lifestyle. And it is maintained by, this, by the brain. But when we've repeated a new thought or practice, a new behavior for 90 days, it becomes part of the brain's architecture. And voila, a new hardwiring. So basically what they're saying is, is if you do a different routine for 90 days, your brain can be hardwired, rewired to a completely new autopilot behavior. Instead of thinking a certain way or being a certain way, living in despair, depression, living in a woe is me, you can live in joy, you can live in peace, you can change, you can shift that way of thinking. And the good news is that we can change the way we think after those new and approved redemptive thoughts become habits. A new lifestyle can become the new norm. The Bible says, 
we can challenge false thoughts by taking every thought captive. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. It says, we tear down arguments and every presumption set up against the knowledge of God. And we take every thought captive to make it obedient to Christ. Christ is saying, we can do that. The apostles are telling us, God is telling us, you can take every thought captive. All of a sudden, a thought says, you're not good enough. You're not worthy. You're not this. You're not that. You're a terrible person. You can take that thought captive and say, no, God loves me. I know he loves me. He sent his son to die for me. And if it was only me that believed, he would have still sent his son for me. You, you start thinking like that and all of a sudden those thoughts of despair, worry, depression, fear, all of a sudden start to change because you're taking every thought captive and you're shifting that way of thinking to something new and different. You're putting on the new self, renewing your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> and so... By thinking on what is true, we overcome low self-esteem, fear, doubt. We can also have what the Bible calls the mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? First Corinthians tells us this in the second uh, chapter in verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is set on the things of God and the will of God. It's not set on the things of this world and the, the, th the, the terrible things of this world. It's set on the good things, the wholesome things, the things of God. The things that bring peace, the things that bring hope, the things that bring joy, the things that bring love. That's the mind of Christ. The things of mercy, the things of grace. That's the mind of Christ. Because those lies of low self-esteem, of fear and doubt, don't exist in the mind of God. They don't exist in the mind of Christ. We can think as if we are a healthy and whole, and soon as our bodies and our spirits sh uh, start to understand this, and when we rewire our brains, we'll, have, we'll see a new vitality, a new a purpose in our lives, a new hope that takes over. This is a, a great day to call those stubborn false thoughts by name. Write them down and then tear them down. Replace them with noble thoughts, admirable thoughts, thoughts of excellence. And allow your new, bigger thought life to open up the door to a grander world. You know, I wonder what the five top thoughts are on your mind each and every day. Are they worries? Are they fears? Are they low self-esteem? Maybe you're like kicking yourself because you didn't do this or you didn't quite make it in that or you messed up here. What are those? Take those thoughts. Recognize them and tear them down and says, I am loved by God. And yeah, it doesn't matter if I'm good enough because Christ was good enough and he took my place. It doesn't matter that I've fallen, I've stumbled, I've made a mistake, I sinned because Christ crucified it on the cross for me because he loves me. You start thinking like that and those thoughts that tear you down, that cause sorrow and depression, all of a sudden shift into something else, a hope purpose of new joy of peace of love it's amazing how shifting your thinking as paul the apostles as christ as god keeps telling us to shift our thinking to renew our minds to think on the things that are good to consume the things that are good that we may have the mind of christ and produce much fruit for the glory of god are your dominant thoughts in line with what God's word says about you. Does God's word say, what does God's word say about you? It says good things about you, how much he loves you. And if you call upon his name, 
He'll be right there to save you, to love you, to cleanse you. I can't think, I, I think of so many scriptures come to mind so that when the devil starts harping in our ear, oh, you made a mistake. God, God will never forgive you for that mistake. You can say, oh, what a liar. Proves God's love towards us while we were yet sinners, God, that Christ died for us. That proves God's love toward us. I mean, when you take those thoughts captive, when you shift your way of thinking, it opens up a different expectation of life, a different feeling. You're operating out of a, a different mode. And if you are still dragging those self-doubts, that self-pity, that fear, and all of that, leave it at the cross. Be cleansed. Be free. Be uh, full and made whole in Christ. For that is His will for you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, help us to shift our thinking, to think on the good things, to renew our minds in you, and to put all your glory, your praises, to put your word and store it in our heart that we can remind ourselves and chase away any, any doubts, any worries, any anxieties, any shame, whatever it may be. Help us to renew ourselves and have the mind of Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.